Hello viewers and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all well and good. Now, a question for you. Should you buy the brand new Tarmac SL8 from Specialized? Well, I managed to get my hands on the bike for the next few weeks to find out. So in today's video, I'll give you a first look, first impression, and next month in December, I'll have a full review. So make sure you subscribe to the channel by hitting that button down below if you want to see that. I have done a detailed overview of the new bike from the launch a few months ago, if you want to watch that, linked up above right now. But I'm really excited to live the bike and ride it every day when it's not too cold as it is today, hence the big gloves, to really find out what it's like, how it delivers performance, weight, stiffness, aero, and how it compares to other bikes like the Super 6 Evo, the Amanda SLR, the TCR Advanced Pro, and other bikes in a category of lightweight, aero race bikes. So the bike arrived two days ago and there are a few things that have really stood out in building a bike up and setting up for riding over the next few weeks. So we'll go through the details, we'll put on the scales, we'll listen to a free hub. So let's dive in and have a closer look. The SL8 is of course all about aerodynamics and has some distinctive features that really divide opinion. I can't wait to find out what you think of this bike. So a key feature on the new bike is a head tube. We have basically a nose cone, a fairing that's very deep and very narrow and Specialized for some reason had called it the Speed Sniffer, which is a bit of a daft name if you ask me. But the concept is sound because when it comes to aero, the front of the bike is really important, more so than the back of the bike, that frontal surface area reducing your CDA. So I do think we'll see this feature on other bikes going forward. It'll be a real influence, I think, whether it looks as distinctive as this remains to be seen. Now, after having spent a few days with the bike, it doesn't look as bad as it does in the press photos and definitely looks better with your own eyes. And in the paint job, it doesn't really look that odd. I mean, it looks a bit different to a normal bike with a sort of straight head tube, but it doesn't look ugly. It doesn't look that bad at all, really. But then we have a really narrow fork, space for 32 millimeter wide tires and the new Roval Rapide handlebar, a one-piece carbon handlebar and stem, and that also reduces drag at the front. And it's quite a nice shape, really. It sweeps forward a bit, quite compact, shallow drops. There's not much bar tape on the tops, but we have a sort of dotted gripper material on the tops as well. And a few spacers here, so it's not totally slammed, but you can slam it if you want to. And the brake hoses, go underneath the stem you can actually see them exposed there and then into the head tube i know they had some issues with the sl7 with a fork recall which they fixed remedied thankfully but i do think one of the smarter solutions in terms of how the brake hoses are rooted underneath the handlebar and it all works fairly well at least from a, a point of view of riding a bike and setting up out of the box uh, i'm not talking about servicing the headset bearings that's another uh, kettle of fish the back of the frame looks very similar to the old SL7 in terms of the dropped rear stays and uh, all the tube profiles, but a big difference is in how skinny and slim the seat tube and seat posts are. Apparently the skinniest they've ever used on a tarmac, and so slender in fact that a DIT battery for a Shimano group set on a bike won't fit in the new seat post. So very aero seat post with a two bolt clamp that I found quite easy to set up with a specialized power, short nosed, stubby saddle on top. So perfect for the race bike credentials we have here. Getting a saddle height just right was fairly straightforward. We have a four millimeter bolt underneath this very slender rubber flap that stays in place nicely. And you torque it up to six Newton meters. And I found that easy to set up. And I've done one ride so far and it hasn't slipped. So no issues. Uh, we're setting the saddle height up. I know some internal clamp systems can be a bit fiddly and slipping can be an issue sometimes, but so far I've been just fine. And the rubber flap that goes around the seat post there is very slender. So a small detail, but a very important one because some bike brands don't get the details like this just right, which Specialized, to their credit, do. I think the new tarmac looks better from the non-drive side than the drive side because it really shows off the influence of the Athos in all the tube profiles and generally how skinny this bike is. If you ignore the front half of the bike, it looks like a lightweight climbing bike, no real aero influence. I mean, there is in the seat post, the seat tube, but the rear stays are super skinny 
and we have a very small bottom bracket area with a threaded bottom bracket shell, no press fit here to worry about. And the tubes that intersect the bottom bracket junction are very small, a very low profile, and generally not the beefy, oversized shape you normally get on an aero bike like a Trek Madone or something like that. So this whole lower section of the frame is pure lightweight. And I think it looks fantastic. I think it looks really nice. And that bottom bracket junction does give me sort of old school bike vibes like a Cannondale or a Parley or something like that with round tubes and lugged junctions. Although this isn't a full review, there is a bit of a gripe already with the bike. So the tarmac has space for 32 millimeter wide tires, the same as the SR7 and the same as a TCR and a Monda and other bikes in the category. But especially I still insist on fitting 26 millimeter wide tires. I know the bike is designed for racing and the pros on their bikes anyway still run 26 millimeter wide tires. But we've seen the likes of Tally Pogaccia and Avid Pros adopting 28 and even 30 millimeter wide tires. And I don't run anything narrower than a 28 these days on a bike like this, my TCR at 28 or even 30 sometimes. So I think this bike could have been spec with wider tires to suit the actual people buying the bike who, yeah, they might be racing, but they might just be riding fast and enjoying the speed and performance of their bike. So I think a 28 mil wide tire would have been a smart choice. Now, one reason to not buy the new Tarmac SO8 could be the price. This top of the range model with Shimano Durace GIT costs, and I hope you're sitting down for this, 12,000 pounds, which is just a serious amount of money, way too much for me. There is also a SRAM red build costing the same 12,000 pounds. So let me know if you prefer Shimano or SRAM down below. But the range does start with the Expert at £6,000, so half the price of the bike here. And £6,000 for essentially the same frame is a bit more appetising. Still a lot of money, but a bit better than £12,000. In reality, very few people will buy the top of range bike. It's just there for the small number of people who do want to buy the best of the best. And more people will be better served by the Expert and those sort of models low down the range. Hopefully you might see some lower models in the SL8 range next year with different group set options that bring the price down a bit. And there is now a non S-Works frame set option on their website for £3,000. So a lot cheaper than the need five grand for an S-Works frame set if you do want to build the bike yourself, which is a good route to building a bike you want, the components you want on your bike and sometimes save a bit of money as well. Now, for £12,000, you get a lot of nice equipment. Shimano's best DI2 group set, of course, 12-speed, just faultless, works extremely well. I like the fact we have a high-quality power meter from 4i, a dual-sided one, and not a Shimano power meter, because the Shimano power meters do have issues, shall we say, so not the best choice, probably. So a nice, reliable power meter. We have the company's own Roval Rapid wheels, the most aero wheels with their own S-Fox tires, which are just a known high quality tire. Carbon seat posts, a power saddle with carbon rails, and of course the carbon handle butt and stem. This bike has been sent to me with a computer mount out front and two bottle cages. So let's see what the bike actually weighs with my pedals fitted, some speed plays, to get a real world ready to ride weight. Right, let's see what 12,000 pounds looks like on the scales of truth. So reset the scales, turn them on, be a good start. And here we go. That beat at 6.85 kilos. I'll bring that to the camera. So there we go, 6.85 kilograms, ready to ride. That is damn impressive and lighter than many other top end bikes with no pedals and no computer and bottle cages fitted. So if you want a lightweight bike that's also claimed to be aero, more aero than the Venge, they say, then a the tarmac, if you ignore the price, does look pretty amazing. So, oh, one last thing, the free hub sound test. I know you like that, so here we go. So 
So that has been a, a bit of an overview of my daily ride for the next few weeks. I know, lucky me, can't wait to see how it performs and answer all your questions in the comment section down below. Anyway, if you want to see the review next month, make sure you subscribe to the channel by hitting that button down there. And if you want to see that overview of the bike from when it launched a few months ago, then watch the video up here. So I'm off for a ride to see how it performs. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.